And welcome back to the video lecture on essay writing. This is Alan Friesen, YouTube channel Alan the Friesen. So we're going to be looking at the second part of this video. If you haven't watched the first part, watch it. This isn't going to make sense. And you need to. Before you write any essay, you need to plan it. My God in heaven, it's important. So part two, the first draft. We're looking at the same question that we looked at in part one. What is your opinion of the idea that our identity is shaped by difficult experiences? I'm going to be giving some examples that we found in Gran Torino, which is a text that my 20-2 students looked at over the last couple of weeks. If you haven't watched the film, you know, watch it. It's pretty good, and it'll give you help you um, have an understanding of what we're going through here. So that's your homework assignment. Watch Gran Torino. So what I've got is I've got the three sections of an essay. Introduction, body, conclusion. It's not difficult. The structure that I'm going to be going through with you is the same structure that I use with my grade 7 students to my grade 12 students, the same structure that I used when I taught at the University of Regina in the First Year Writing Center. It's a very nice structure because you can use it for a short 250 word essay all the way up to a master's thesis of 100, 200 pages. It's nicely scalable. Of course, by the time you're writing a master's thesis and you're watching this YouTube video, I worry about you. I'm going to tell your uh, supervisor. So three parts, introduction, body, and conclusion. Now what we're doing here is we're doing a technical exercise. We're not writing the type of awesome creative essays that you find by E.B. White or the interesting ones on longform.org or any of the larger magazine publishers. That's original work that's being done. If you're being asked to write an essay in class, in any class, it's likely that the prof is giving you a question. It's likely that the prof is going to be reading the same essay over and over again 30 times. And it's just to test whether or not you know how to write an essay, whether or not you know how, to, how about the content of whatever text you're being asked to write about. So don't think that this is the be-all and end-all of essay writing. There are far better essays out there than the ones I'm going to teach you to write. Far more interesting ones. Longform.org. Go there. Really interesting stuff. So, we're going to start off by talking about the introduction. Introduction. In the introduction, you need to start off the very beginning with mode, author, text, and hint. Real simple. Mode, author, text, hint. Now, what I mean by mode is the, the, the mode of writing <coughs> is, is the type of writing, um, the type of text that you're studying. So if it's a film, the mode is film. If it's a short story, the mode is short story. If it's a novel, the mode is novel. So you talk about that first. The film. And then what you're going to do is you're going to talk about either the author, if it's a printed text, or you're going to talk about the director, if it's film, and the title. So, the film, Gran Torino, in MLA, it should be underlined or italicized, directed by Clint Eastwood. There we go. So we have mode, we have author or director, we've got the text title, what title, that sounds better. And then what you're going to do is you're going to give a hint that's somehow related to your argument. So the hint is a very short synopsis, it's a very short description of what the text is about, but it's also going to be related somehow to what you're going to be arguing. So in this instance, let's say, uh, centers around Walt, <coughs> a war veteran who faces many challenges in his every day life. There we go. Very basic, very straightforward, very much to the point. It's not the best, and what I'm writing up here is first draft writing. I would fix everything that I write on the board as I went over and revised it. But for now, 
Here we go, introduction. Now some teachers are gonna tell you, you need to have a really big, really florid introduction. It needs to be beautiful, it needs to be longer, it needs to be more complicated. From my perspective, when I read essays, I want the basics, I want the basic introduction, I want the basic argument, and that's it. I want to see how well you can write in the body of your essay. Your introduction, it serves a point. The only point of your introduction is to let us know what you're talking about, what your argument is, and that's it. From the dawn of time, people have wondered about difficult experiences. That sort of stuff, nobody wants to read that. I'm sorry. Teachers don't want to read that. Very sorry. This is basic. This is to the point. And from what I know about teaching at university, first year English, this is what I was taught. It's very simple, it's very straightforward, it's important. There might be a case, once you get into third or fourth year English, where your introduction, your argument, needs to be very long and very complex because it's a very complex argument. You're not going to find that in high school, unless you're at like a very, very advanced, like an AP class, for instance, or international baccalaureate. But then we're just talking about a very basic structure here. If you're in those classes, it's likely that you're good enough in order to come up with your own essay, format, it's likely that you're a good enough writer that you don't need this. So, if you need help, if you're watching, let's just use the basic format. Film Grand Trainer, directed by Clint Eastwood, centers around Walt, a war veteran who faces many challenges in his everyday life. And then you're going to put in the argument that we saw in part one. Over the course of the film, Walt's and look, I'm going to use even the exact words from the prompt. Walt's difficult experiences have helped to shape, oh, shape his identity. Shape identity. Oh, it's right there. If I was reading this right now, two things would come to mind. First of all, okay, this person has very clearly read this, and I'm happy, because now it seems like this person knows what they're doing. And second of all, I'm going to think, okay, this is not the most original essay in the bunch. It's true, because the words and the ideas are taken straight from the prompt. For those of you who struggle with writing, that's still fine. If you can show your reader that you know what you're talking about, that you're actually answering the topic, then we're good. If it's not as original as it can be, that's okay. Maybe it can be fixed up in the second draft. Maybe you can work on it over the course of your English career. Don't worry about it. As long as you're answering the topic, that's what English teachers care about. Now, some people, I would, me included, it would be nice if you were to include a hint of what your essay is going to be about. Not just a hint, but um, what's what's called a divisio. The, or like an outline of your argument. So what, over the course of the film, Walt's difficult experiences, comma, including his time in Korea, his wife's death, the beating of Tao, the beating of Sue, and um, his own sacrifice, comma, have helped to shape his identity. So what you're doing is you're actually telling me in, in your introduction what your points of the essay are. Some teachers don't like this. I do because it shows me that right up front you have this plan down. You have it planned out and you are ready to go. I like it. So, and that's the introduction. With that and that, done. Easy. Now for the body paragraph, what I like to do is I like to use a metaphor drawn for volleyball. Volleyball, you say? But this is English. Indeed. Now, as we are writing a literary essay, literary essay, I said that right. As we're writing a literary essay, what's important is talking about the literary text. And when it comes to the literary text, what we like to see is that students are going towards the evidence that we see in the text. If you're writing from a short story or from a novel, 
and if you've got the novel in front of you, because it's not an in-class essay, it, this structure will help you use direct quotes or indirect quotes or other pieces of examples from the text and talk about that. It forces you to go into the text and talk about the text. As English teachers, we like to see this. We like to see our students interacting with the text. Instead of just <coughs> offering up vague opinions of what Grand Tree is about and possibly being wrong. So service, set, spike, score, switch. Five parts. Now this, what we're going to be talking about, this is one paragraph. You're going to repeat this for as many points as you have. So service, this is your topic sentence. This is what the entire paragraph is about. So say, we're still talking about this in Gran Torino and Walt, and say the first one is about Korea. Our topic sentence would be something like, the first difficult experience that helps to shape Walt's identity is his time during the Korean War. And that's going to be your first, your topic sentence. Korean War, Walt. That's it. So everything now in this paragraph is going to be about that. Everything must be about that. If you have ideas or concepts or even examples that are not related to that, take it out. So what I'm going to do, I've got my topic sentence. I'm going to skip to spike and then I'm going to come back to set. Don't be alarmed, I didn't forget anything. So your spike is your evidence. So direct or indirect quotation. If you're talking about a movie, it's not going to be obviously a direct, well, I guess you can include a direct quote from it. It's more difficult unless you're actually taking notes during the film. So it's more likely going to be indirect evidence. So we're talking about Walt's experience during Korea. We're talking about we need a piece of evidence to show that his time during Korea was difficult. Okay? Difficult. So, when he's talking to Tao, this is after Sue has been attacked, and this is just before Walt goes out and performs his vigilante routine, sort of. <coughs> what, what Walt is talking about with Tao is how difficult of an experience it was to be in war and to shoot a 15-year-old Korean soldier in the face who just wanted to surrender. This was a difficult experience for him. He's thought about it for years. It's had a tremendous effect on him. Now, the, the effect we have to infer, but this is most like this is most certainly a difficult experience. Difficult experience. And it's likely that it's shaped his identity, but we'll get to that in a second. So, really, what you're going to put for this is pretty much exactly what I just said. Walt shares his difficult experience with Tao when he describes his time in the Korean War where he shot a 15-year-old boy in the face who just wanted to surrender. That's it. That's, again, one sentence. So here, our service, one sentence. Our spike, one sentence. Maybe one or two, depending on what you're going to be actually doing. So now I'm going to go back to set. What this is, is you need to set up your evidence. You cannot just drop a quotation or a piece of example or an example into your essay without setting it up first, without letting us know where it is. So this, you would say, after Sue, after Sue is attacked and before Walt locks up Tao and goes to the gang himself, he tells Tao about, and that's it. I have just set up this quotation. I've told you where it's from, where in the film it's from, who Walt is talking to when he describes it. It's all there. And that's half a sentence. But you need to let us know in the set where the evidence is from. And it's not if you're looking at a novel or short story. It's just, it's not on page two and then go on to this. You don't, no, you need more. You need to describe where it's from to show the reader that you know where it's from, first of all, you just didn't flip through things randomly, but also that you can place it within the context of the story. It's important. It's important for good writing. So, service, set, spike. We have uh, served the ball, somebody has set it, and now it's spiked. 
Next, we talk about the most substantial and the most important part of your paragraph, which is the score. Just like in volleyball. You can do all these things nicely, but unless you actually score, it's all for nothing. Unless you actually analyze, and I'm going to erase all this because I want to emphasize how important this is. Unless you actually analyze your example and how it relates to this and how it relates to this, unless you actually do that, then it's worth nothing. I'm sorry to say. So in your analysis, you're going to very clearly explain how your piece of evidence matches this, your taught your body, your, sorry, your service. So that every single paragraph, when it's set up like this, all of it is going to go to prove this. So your evidence proves your service, your topic sentence, all of your topic sentences, and therefore all of your paragraphs go and support this. So analysis. What I mean by analysis is you're going to talk about how it's related. So Walt shot somebody during the Korean War, his identity is shaped. You need to talk about identity now. We've already talked about it, this is a difficult experience. How has this affected, how does this shape his identity? Perhaps, and this is again where we're talking about inference. We're going to infer that Walt's character is the way it is because of these experiences. So perhaps the reason that Walt is such a miserable old person, such a racist old person, is because of his experience during the war. He talked about how he needed to pile up bodies like sandbags. And perhaps the only way that his human brain could do that was by depersonalizing the people he was shooting. Instead of seeing them as people, he needed to think of them in terms of, in terms of objects, or he needed to think badly of the people in order to be able to shoot them. This perhaps informs his racism. Certainly his anger and the fact that he's so willing to pull weapons on people. Certainly this is related to his time during the war. So you would perhaps talk about um, the racism element, his willingness to be violent, his lack of willingness, a lack of tolerance for his uh, mom neighbors. So this would all go in your analysis section. You would talk about this. I just have three ideas here. There's probably more that you could talk about with that piece of evidence. So this here, service, set, spike, we're talking about maybe three sentences. Then your score is going to be the majority of your paragraph, four to six. It needs to be a substantial part of your paragraph. You need to talk about this the most, whatever the analysis is. And then, once you're done with the analysis, once you've very clearly linked your evidence to your topic sentence, to your topic, to your argument, once it's all linked together, that's when you switch topics. So, you, we've already talked about, the, um, about Walt's Walt's time in Korea. Next, we're going to talk about perhaps his wife dying. So you would want to transition between ideas. Aside from Walt's experience during the Korean War, Walt also is shaped by the difficult experience of his wife passing away and having to deal with his family. So what we're doing is we're switching from one topic after this happens, and we're even transitioning to the next one. So that's one, oh, a new paragraph. I'm going to do the whole thing again. Now, this is a very basic format. Service set, bike, score, switch. Service set, bike, score, switch. There's a couple of ways that you can change it up and make it a little bit less formulaic. You could have a topic sentence set up a piece of evidence, give the evidence, and then perhaps in order to make your point, you need to set up a second piece of evidence. And then you score. Switch. 
issue. So anytime you're going to be talking about two pieces of evidence in the same paragraph, make sure that you set it up each time. And then here, tell us why you've talked about two pieces of evidence. Sometimes you might need to talk about, no, oh, I'm sorry, sometimes you need to set spike score. Sometimes you need to talk about how this one piece of evidence actually works for two different paragraphs. So maybe it's <coughs> like that, then you switch service, score, switch. And in your score here, you're going to be talking about that same set spike. You'll just refer to it. In addition to the fact that Walt was a grumpy person because of the events in Korea, he was also a racist person. You don't need to repeat the same quote again. So there's different ways that you can switch this up to make it a little bit uh, less formulaic, as I said. But that's the body. And that's the most work. You've got a lot, of it, a lot of evidence to go through. You've got a lot of explanation to go through. This is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Then, one that wants that stuff finished, your body paragraph, this is when you move on to the conclusion. And again, at the very beginning of the conclusion, there's a trigger phrase that we see. Some trigger words, usually including title, author, hint. Very similar to what we see in the introduction. Maybe you don't need all of this. Or maybe it's shortened. For instance, in Eastwood's Grand Torino. So instead of saying the whole thing again like we saw in the introduction, all we've got is we've got the last name and we've got the, we've got the title of the text. This is a trigger phrase for English teachers. We see this and we think to ourselves, okay, this is the conclusion now. So if you're doing something like this at the beginning of a different paragraph, you're going to make us very confused because we have very simple minds. No, we're just going to look at you and think, what the heck are you doing? What I don't want to see, and what most English teachers don't want to see is in conclusion. No, or all in all, no. Don't use these cliche, trite ways of starting your conclusion. Start it off the same way that you started off your intro. In Eastwood's Grand Torino, the character of Walt starts off as a miserable person, but because of the difficult experiences, his identity is shaped into somebody who's willing to give up his own life for his friends. So what we've basically done is we've taken your entire introduction and we've compressed it down into one sentence. And that's the start of your conclusion. But you can't just leave it there. Once you're done with this, you need to explain why we care, or why we should care. Or, so what? So we've done this wonderful analysis on the character of Walt. We've looked at Walt all the way through this film. We've traced his development. His identity has gone from a grumpy person to a wonderful person. We've talked about this. All our evidence is great. So what? How does it affect us? For those of you who have not thought of Walt this way, what does that do for you? What does that do for your interpretation? What does that do for your enjoyment of the film? You need to talk here about why it matters that you've spent all this time on this essay and why the reader should care. And it's not just because you're the English teacher, you need to mark it. That's why you should care. No. Go deeper than that. Talk about how this film perhaps represents racism in America. About how Americans have struggled with war and they've struggled with conflict overseas. And as a result, they, you know, maybe, and I'm Canadian, I don't want to go here, but maybe the fabric of American culture does contain overt traces of racism. But through tolerance and through understanding, we can move past that. So you want to talk about perhaps, maybe there's the message of the film is, with tolerance, with love and understanding, we can move past racism and see people the way they really are. 
and treat them the way they should be treated. Why we should care, what this is about. This is a good time also to include inferences and predictions. So to um, maybe Walt's grand uh, granddaughter, having been passed up on the Grand Torino, wasn't she wasn't given the car. Maybe she takes time to examine why Tao was given it, and as a result, develops into a better character. The same thing with Walt's two sons. They see the love that was shown towards Tao, and they wonder why, what happened here, and they investigate it for themselves. Perhaps Tao, well, for certainly the character of Tao has changed over the course of the film. He has become a much better person as well, and that was because of Walt's influence. But like I said, in the conclusion, it's a good time for inferences, for predictions. What this does is it shows your reader that you can think, and that you actually care about what you're writing. It's not just an exercise to you. And to be honest, okay, for some of you when you write, maybe that's all it is. Maybe it's just a mark. But. As teachers, what we like to see is we like to see our students getting involved in what they're writing, actually caring about what they're writing, which is why as much as possible, at least in my class, I give as much freedom as possible so that students can decide what they're going to write on so they can find something that they care about. Because I want to read what students care about as opposed to whatever my idea is about this film. So once you're done this, once you're done introduction, body, paragraph, and conclusion, what you've got is not a finished essay. What you've got is a first draft. It's at this point that you go back over it. You read the entire thing again. If there's any sentences or if there's anything in there that's not related to your topic, you need to take it out. It needs to be gone. No matter how good the idea is, if it's not related to this, it's distracting from your main point. The phrase in creative writing is, kill your darlings. Say you've got a really darling, a really awesome, a really beautiful point that you want to make. But it doesn't fit in with what you're trying to talk about. You need to take it out. You need to spell check. Most of us are writing on computers now. This button, F7, for those of you who are using Windows and Microsoft Word, F7 is the spell check button. Notice how I haven't talked at all about grammar or spelling. I see students doing this all the time. Pay attention. I see students write a sentence and then stop and double click and fix word and fix word and fix word. And then they write another sentence then it's stop and fix and fix. Don't do that. It makes it take way longer than it needs to be. Write out the entire essay. Ignore the squigglies until the very end, until you're done. On my computer, I've turned that all off. I don't have any red or green squigglies on my computer. I just write. I write and I write and I write and I get my first draft done. And then I edit. You will have a better time at writing an essay, if you edit second, write first. So, once this is done, that's the time to go over spelling. Read it over. Read it over out loud. If you just read on a piece of paper, you're only using one part of your brain. You're only using one of your senses. That's your eyes. If you read it out loud, you are using your eyes to read it. You're using your mouth to speak it. You're using ears to listen to it. It's accessing more parts of your brain. That's awesome! Use more brains! It helps to catch mistakes, and it also helps for you to listen to see how it sounds. So go over it again. Take your time. If you have 70 minutes to write an essay, you should be taking 70 minutes to write the essay. I was terrible at this when I was in high school. I would write a first draft, even in university, I would write a first draft, and I couldn't stand to look at it again. I felt embarrassed, I felt like I wanted to get out of there, I was sick of it, I was done. My best writing was not done in university. It was certainly not done in high school. 
My best writing comes now when I'm willing to take time to put more effort into a second and final draft. So do that. Take it from me. And I think that's about it. Once you've done the editing, you've got yourself a final draft, you're ready to hand it in, it's something you're proud of. That's all. If you have any questions, let me know on the channel, but otherwise, good luck with writing. That's it.